Welcome to the Audacity to Podcast, episode 165, Six P's for a Proven Podcasting Workflow. Thank you for joining me for the Audacity to Podcast. I'm Daniel J. Lewis, and this is the award-winning show about podcasting, where I give you the guts and teach you the tools to launch or improve your own podcast for sharing your passions and finding success. One of the things that people have often wondered about is, where do I go when I have an idea, I want to take my podcast from maybe nothing to a finished, published, publicized episode and grow my audience from that? That's what this episode is all about, and this has been requested by Gene Desperoli, who wanted to know about a podcasting workflow. And in the last episode, number 164, I talked about the podcasting pre-flight checklist, and that's certainly part of this workflow, but that by itself deserved its own episode to talk about everything that you need to check before you start your podcast. So if you haven't checked that out, go to theaudacitypodcast.com slash pre-flight so that you can download the notes for that and have your own pre-flight checklist before you hit that record button. But long before you hit the record button, you may think, I want to start a podcast, or maybe you already have a podcast and you're at that point where you realize, I need a new episode out. What do I do? So I've got six points for you that each one starts with the letter P, and that's as far as the alliteration goes in this episode. And those six steps are, number one, plan, number two, prepare, number three, present, number four, produce, number five, publish, and number six, promote. Plan, prepare, present, produce, publish, and promote. Let's get into this, and you can follow along with the show notes at theaudacitypodcast.com slash 165. Number one, plan. This is really the most important step in starting a podcast or starting a podcast episode. There's an old proverb that says failure to plan is planning to fail. And this really applies because it seems the greatest podcasts out there start, build on, and end with plans. So there are different aspects to setting a plan for your podcast episode since we're looking at primarily an episode workflow. First, set your goals. What do you want to accomplish with this podcast as a whole? And what do you want to accomplish with this particular episode? What is it that you want your audience to get from this episode? If you are an educational or informative podcast, then your goal is most likely you want your audience to learn something. Maybe you want your audience to do something, to take some kind of action, maybe political action, uh, conservative, Christian action, whatever it is. Maybe you just want to entertain your audience. So your goal is make them laugh, make them smile, make them have hope. Those are your goals and just a sample of what kind of goals you could have for your show. So set your goals for your show and for your episode because you'll be coming back to this later on in this workflow. Collect ideas. Capture every thought that you have for your content. No matter how rough the idea is, no matter how crazy it seems at any point, I really recommend using some kind of accessible tool in order to capture all of these thoughts. Like it could be as simple as a small notebook that you keep in your pocket or in your purse. Or it could be something more advanced and yet still simple like Evernote. And I have a referral link in the show notes for this episode for Evernote if you'd like to sign up over there. It's great because you can use pretty much any kind of mobile device in order to add to and access your notes. So have something like this, which is where you can collect all of your ideas. Don't cross out any idea unless you've already covered it. Put all of your ideas on here, no matter how crazy they seem. I have several notes in progress inside of Evernote where I have ideas that I'm processing. Maybe it's for a product or a podcast episode or something I want to do on my websites or just something I want to keep in mind. So I have all of these notes in very, very draft form. Occasionally, like just recently, I was in church listening to a sermon and just out of the blue, an idea hit me for something. So I quickly switched over to Evernote on my iPad, jotted down a couple notes and then switched back to my Bible app and was able to move on. This is also a getting things done aspect of 
productivity to capture these ideas so they don't leave you and also so they don't torment you with whatever you're doing and trying to think, I need to remember this, I need to remember this. Just capture those ideas, no matter how crazy they are, so that you don't have to try and remember them. Even if your content is practically handed to you, like you have interviews or you have a TV show fan podcast or you review music or anything like that, you respond to feedback, make sure that you continue to collect insights, like certain things that you want to pull out or ideas of new approaches, illustrations that you want to use, any kind of feedback that might help you in producing this. Just collect all of those ideas together. And I do think Evernote is a great place to do that. You could also use something like Workflowy, SpringPad, Google Docs, a piece of paper, anything like that. But whatever it is, collect your ideas. Next, pick the topics that you want to cover or a single topic that you want to cover. If you've got all of these ideas that you've collected, then just pick one. Even if it's not developed, just pick what idea you want to go with and then you can start to develop it a little bit later on in this workflow. So this is why it's so important to have that list of ideas, no matter where they are in the development stage, because then you have choices of what to do, and you might even decide to map out what your next several episodes will be. Like I'll tell you that starting with episode 170 of the Audacity podcast, I'm going to start a new mini-series that may be up to 10 episodes where I'll be challenging some of the podcasting assumptions and presuppositions, stuff like, should you really have a WordPress website and other things? And I'd love your feedback for that. And I'll share the feedback information in a little bit. But when you have a list of topics, it's easy then to see where you're going with the show and to filter those through your goals to decide which of these fit with my goals and which of them should I set aside or turn into a blog post or anything like that. It's your idea ground. Next, schedule for preparation. We all have the same amount of time in our day, and it really depends on how we use that time with how productive we are. So if you don't set aside time to do certain things, then many other things in life will steal your time. They may steal it legitimately or illegitimately. You may just find time disappearing from you unless you specifically set it aside that time for you to work on your podcast. You could split up your time so that you are planning on one day, preparing on another day, producing on another day, and so on. Or you could do this all in one single fatal swoop. That's what I do with the Audacity to Podcast is throughout the week, I'm collecting ideas, developing ideas, and building on my list. But then come Mondays when I record the show live at 2 p.m. Eastern, generally, then that's when I have spent several hours in the day to prepare my content and I've scheduled that so nothing else can get on my calendar during those hours and I try hard to focus knowing that this is the time I need to work on this. I have a meeting with WordPress in order to develop my show notes for this so it's a scheduled part of my week. I know that our lives can be crazy at different times but try to specifically set aside that time to prepare, even if it's just you realize you have some time, so you start a timer for an hour. That's your new schedule, even though it's one minute before that time that you've decided to schedule it. Set aside that time. So under step one for plan, number one, set goals. Number two, collect ideas. Number three, pick the topic or topics to cover. And number four, schedule for preparation. Now, the second step in your podcasting workflow after plan is prepare. You are getting ready to record, and this is exciting, but don't forget to prepare your thoughts and prepare your presentation, and that will make things flow so much more smoothly. Several steps toward preparing. First, research. As you are the communicator of your idea, you need to really be the authority in this idea. That doesn't mean you have to know everything there is to know about this idea, But you should do your research. Know whether the things you're saying are true. Look up the facts. Check third-party research. See what other people in your same industry are saying. Review your source material. Whatever it takes, really, for you to get that research so that you can present a more knowledgeable presentation and speak with greater authority. Do that work. Get that research done. After you've done research, then review your feedback. If your show receives feedback, that is, 
check to see if your upcoming episode answers, addresses, or in some way incorporates the feedback that you've received. Next, outline your content. Whether you write a script for your episodes or you pretty much go ad lib, having some kind of outline for your content will always help you. As I've said before, this could really be a simple bullet point list of the items you want to cover. Maybe the news items with their links, or maybe it is a full-blown outline like I usually do, where I have my master points and then my sub points and I have asides and all of these details. But an outline, no matter how advanced or basic it is, will help you present your content better and will help you create your content as you'll be able to fit it inside of this outline and extend your outline as you go along, which helps you have a much more understandable presentation. If you can create an outline, your audience can follow it even if you're not speaking the outline like step one, step two, step three, but you know where you want to go from each thing that you're sharing. If it's news items, if it's stories, you know what you have to cover And you can monitor and take advantage of the time that you have in order to cover that in your show. So outline your content. Next, draft your show notes. I really like having my show notes prepared before I record because it's the way I refine my ideas. It's it's like an Area 51 for whatever topic I'm working on. Here is where I can test some of my wording. I can write out my notes. I can move things around and realize, no, this actually goes under a separate section. For example, when I started this outline for this episode, I had maybe four points, and then I realized I had six points. And then I was starting to think, well, plan and prepare are very similar, so do these really need to be separate points? So I could spend some time, just because I was drafting the notes, I could realize, well, these things fit under planning, these things fit under preparation, so yes, these do merit two separate points. Your show notes draft could even be the way that helps you reduce time after you've finished recording your episode and you know you need to get those show notes done at whatever level of detail you do them. Having your show notes done ahead of time then reduces how much time you need after you've finished recording and producing your episode, so you can get that episode published more quickly. Next, gather the resources that you need for your episode. Videos, pictures, sound clips, guest or co-host contact information or bios or anything really that you need for your episode. I suggest doing this after you've created your outline and drafted your show notes because along the way, you'll discover certain resources that you need while you've been preparing your presentation. Next, test and practice. This doesn't mean rehearse verbatim what you're going to say unless you're working off a script, but this does mean working out the certain little details. What are certain wordings that you may struggle with or definitions that you realize you need to use? What stuff communicates well and doesn't communicate well? You may want to test this on people And just ask them, hey, what do you think of this outline? What do you think of this title? Does this picture fit the content well? Or do I look good here? Or is this making sense? Even if you're just in your mind practicing a couple of these points, especially your transition points and your major calls to action, just practicing these in your mind will help you present them a lot better. Next, go through your podcasting pre-flight checklist. And I talked about this in the last episode. And you can get that 20-step podcasting pre-flight checklist over at theaudacitypodcast.com slash preflight. And these are 20 different things that you should do before you hit record. Stuff like making sure that all the noisemakers are in your house are off, remembering to turn on all your equipment, load your software, turn on the lights that you need to warm up before you can start recording your video. All of these kinds of steps that are necessary for you before you start recording. So the steps to prepare are research, review feedback, outline the content, draft show notes, gather resources, test and practice, and pre-flight before recording. That's number two, prepare. Number three, present. This is the time when you're ready to go. It's the exciting time to press that little red record button is really exciting and fulfilling. Well, it's even more fulfilling to press the stop button when you've finished recording an episode or pressing that publish button. But your recording is very important and it's not just as simple as record the episode. 
you want to make sure that you have everything in front of you that you need so that when you record the episode, you're not distracted trying to find things or sift through different things. So steps to present your information well. First, record the episode. Yeah, I know. It's the duh moment of all of this. Duh, hit the record button. Yeah, but how many of us have forgotten to hit the record button at some point? But really, pressing that record button is somewhat of a psychological barrier as well, because many of us, I know, I have struggled with this in the past too, and even still sometimes with certain episodes, I struggle with pressing that record button because I don't feel like pressing that record button. I don't feel like my content is as good, or I don't feel in the mood to podcast, or whatever circumstances there might be. I don't feel like my voice will sound great. All of these different things. You really have to put all of those aside and just press that record button, get it done, and present. Next, while you're recording, focus on your goals. As you're speaking, remember what are those things that you want to accomplish with your podcast as a whole? What do you want to accomplish with this specific episode? What do you want your audience to get from this episode? Or what do you want your audience to do after they listen to this episode? Focus on those goals and then remove anything from your thought patterns and what you're about to say that doesn't line up with those goals or defer them to later on in the episode. You'll notice that I don't start my episodes anymore and I I used to struggle with this and it's still a very big temptation to start a podcast with this, but to start with announcements or to start with small talk or sharing a personal story. And if any of that stuff is heavily related to your show and to your content, then certainly, yeah, give it up front. That's okay. But don't focus too much on it. Focus on your content. Get into that great meat of the content as quickly as possible. And then you can share some of that other stuff later on. But if it's a personal story that inspired the content you're about to share, go ahead and share that personal story up front because people love stories. So if you tell a story and you say, I was really inspired for this story from a thunderstorm that struck my house and put it on fire. Let me tell you this story. What happened is the other day, and I could then, I've already told you that the story is related. Now I can tell you the story. You can get gripped in and wonder, how's this relate? And where's he going with this? And then I share the conclusion and go into my content. So I've hooked you with the story and then moved on. But if I'm just going to sit here and say, I haven't been feeling too well lately, but I decided to go ahead and record a podcast anyway, even though this, 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 and this, that's, that's not relevant. That's not helping me toward my goals at all. But if I really felt the need to present that, I could save it for the end of the episode, if necessary. And that is often a big if. So after you focus on the goals, then speak clearly. Sometimes this means slowing down a little bit. Don't be afraid to pause, just like I did. Faster talking is often interpreted by people as having an association with higher intelligence. But at the same time, if you talk too quickly and quicker than you're comfortable doing, and when people get nervous, they do tend to talk a little bit faster, this can result in stumbling over your words or reliance on... um, on a uh, 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 on a, the, uh, um, the, the, the 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 verbal crutches that you might have, just like I just now did. So slow down as necessary, but don't be afraid of talking too quickly. The main thing is speak clearly. Next, communicate passionately. If you're excited about your topic, let it show. Don't hold it back anymore. Let it show. Let it show. <laughs> Emotions are contagious, so ensure that whatever emotions that you're conveying in your podcast are things that you want your audience to receive. If you're negative, if you're depressed, if you're down, that's what your audience will get, and they will feel those feelings back toward your show. But if you are excited, you're positive, you're upbeat, even if you have bad news to share, that you still can do this positively your audience will get on board with you and they will be inspired to be excited, to be sympathetic, to be whatever these positive feelings are. Next, relate authentically. Don't try to be someone that you're not. 
Don't try to put on the radio voice and welcome to my podcast. No, don't really try to do that. The way that I start the Audacity to Podcast, where I have that edgy, welcome to the Audacity to Podcast, that does fit with my personality because the Audacity to Podcast is about having the guts to podcast. And do you really have the Audacity to Podcast, that is the guts to podcast, then let those guts come out. Let it be known. Be real. Don't be afraid to let your personality come out in your show. Don't be afraid to be authentic. And if you don't like something, it's okay to let people know. Still try to give a very balanced presentation, but if you have opinions, share them. If something is a little bit funny to you, it's okay to chuckle or laugh in your podcast. You don't have to present a completely dry and completely factual and no opinion whatsoever piece be authentic. Next, call to action. Calls to action are the things where you are, well, as the name implies, calling someone to take action in some way. And your audience should know what it is that you want them to do, and they should have something to do. But don't overwhelm them with multiple calls to action. Think about what your primary call to action is. And this will probably relate heavily back to your goals. If it doesn't, then you may need to change that primary call to action. And reinforce this primary call to action throughout your episode wherever it's appropriate. That way you're giving your audience something to do and you're reminding them of it. But try not to give them too much to do. I worked with a podcaster recently in Podcast Masterclass who had 13 calls to action at the end of his episode. And we worked together on this and refined some of these, combined some of them, spaced some of them out throughout his episode instead of sharing all of these 13 items at the end of the episode. And that's that's way too much because with 13 items, well, which one do you really want me to do? And which is most important? And I can't even remember now which thing I was supposed to do because there were so many things mentioned. I thought it was something or I can't remember. So don't overwhelm them with too much. But do give them some kind of calls to action. Maybe rotate your calls to action across different episodes. In this particular episode, you may decide to get people to like you on Facebook. In the next episode, you decide to get them to share your post on Twitter. In the next episode, it could be something completely different. So have a call to action, but don't overwhelm them with too many. So the keys to presenting, that's point three, keys to presenting Record the episode, focus on the goals, speak clearly, communicate passionately, relate authentically, and call to action. Number four, produce. Editing is often everyone's least favorite part of podcasting. I've heard many people say, I hate editing, so I'm just going to put whatever stuff is out there, no matter how bad it sounds or no matter what happens. Sometimes I think that's the wrong approach. How you present your episode can make the production a lot easier for you so you don't have to get in and edit out every little um and every little glitch because you're presenting more clearly so therefore there is less to edit out. But regardless of what level you do with your editing, I do recommend some level of editing. Here are some of the keys to your production that may help you. First, edit the recording. Don't approach this from a perfectionist standpoint where there can't be any pause longer than so many milliseconds and that every single um and uh is removed and everything is absolutely perfect. Perfection will kill podcasters. So that's why I'm not calling this the perfect stage. This is the produce stage, which doesn't mean perfection. But do take note on those major places where you may need to edit something out. Even while recording this episode, there have been certain spots where I failed catastrophically on something like trying to pronounce the word authentically, and I had to say it several times, and I marked that in my recording so I could go back and edit that spot. I'm not going to edit all of my audio, just those major spots that need the editing. But also remember to remove any kind of in opening or closing silence from that point where you press record to when you start talking, edit that out. I recommend if you're going to have some silence at the beginning and end of your episode, make it no more than half a second. Next, 
add any kinds of additional pieces to your production? Do you need intros, outros, any kind of bumpers, sound clip, background music? If you're doing a video podcast, do you need some video branding on your show, lower thirds, uh, transitions, B-roll footage, anything like that that you need to make your episode complete? Add all of these additional pieces in. Next, enhance as necessary. Don't obsess over this and don't try to make yourself sound unnatural and over enhance your voice with multi band compressors or bass boosters or too much equalization or too much noise removal or anything like that. But the idea is remove the distractions. So smooth out your volume levels. Make sure that you are at the same volume level as your co host, and your music and bumpers are about the same volume level as you are. So people aren't having to play with their volume knobs up and down while they're listening. I heard of an audio producer that actually recommended saying, well, don't worry about your volume levels. Your audience will just adjust to that, and they'll adjust their own volume level. It's fine. And no, don't make your audience have to work for something. And don't worry, that wasn't any of the major podcasting consultants out there. So remove the distractions. Like if your background noise is too loud, then reduce it. Don't try to remove it. Also consider things like color correction if you do kind of a video, a podcast, or any kinds of transitions, anything that you need that enhances things, even some basic level of equalization, just to enhance or sweeten the production a little bit. Treat these things like salt and pepper for your meal. You wouldn't dump the salt on your meal. You just sprinkle a little bit on and it makes the meal just a little bit better. That's the kind of enhancing that you should consider doing with your show. That way, it sounds a little bit better, but it doesn't sound unnatural, and you've removed those distractions. Next, finalize your show notes. Look back at your show notes, and you may have discovered that there were certain things that came up while you were recording your episode that need to be added to your show notes. Maybe links, or videos, resources, something that you forgot to add, you realized there was a spelling error, whatever. And check your spelling and your grammar. You may want to hire someone to edit this for you. You may just want to run it through a standard spell check or grammar check, but have something that you'll be proud of putting out there and won't be embarrassed when people say, uh, you really need to reread your stuff because you got grammar errors all over this place. When you're adding any hyperlinks to your show notes, don't just put in the URL. Please don't do that. That can take up a ton of space on the screen. It can look horrible. But also, don't just put in the text, click here, with that being hyperlinked. Instead, put your hyperlinks on relevant text. So don't even say click here, but you could say something like format your text headings, and that links to a blog post about formatting text headings, anything like that. And that is my next point here. Format your text with headings, bullet points, bold, italics, any kind of embedded media that you need in your show notes so that what you have will help your audience consume your content better. It gives them those calls to action, those resources that they may be looking for, like links to services or products that you mentioned in pictures and anything that they might be looking for related to your podcast. And this helps you with search engine optimization, which is the next point. Optimize for search engines. Get your SEO, search engine optimization, on by effectively not writing for Google, writing for humans. Google is becoming increasingly human-like in the way that it indexes content and prioritizes things. So the most important aspect of search engine optimization is making sure that your content works well for humans, that it's relevant, that it's clear, it's understandable, and it contains the keywords that humans would be looking for. For example, you uh, might want to check out our new podcast about the TV show Resurrection at resurrectionrevealed.com. And in the show notes, even though people who are already subscribed know that show is about the TV show Resurrection, it still helps to mention Resurrection in the show notes, not just assume it, because that mentioning of Resurrection in the show notes then helps people find that episode better and makes it then more contextual for people who are reading this and might just momentarily forget, wait, what am I looking at? 
or they're reading it in an RSS reader, in an email program, anything like that. Don't assume everyone consumes your content from a platform that you own. They may consume it from somewhere else. So use these keywords in different areas. Other parts of optimizing your content for search engines would be adding those keywords, a description, and maybe even a separate title into your SEO fields. If you're using a SEO plugin like All-in-One SEO or WordPress SEO by Yoast, or you have a good theme like those from StudioPress that give you the search engine optimization built in. Next, export the final file. When you have all of these pieces in place, it's time to create that file that people are going to end up downloading. If you're doing audio, I suggest MP3. If you're doing video, I suggest MP4. No, those aren't just later versions of each other, but MP4 is the video format. And for podcast video, 640 by 360 is a good resolution, widescreen resolution for video podcasts. If you're going to upload to YouTube, I recommend full 1080p for YouTube. For audio, I recommend that you keep it at a quality level like 64 kilobits per second mono in MP3. Next, if you're working with MP3s, make sure that you add those tags, the ID3 tags to your MP3 files. Especially, make sure that you have the URL for your show notes in that tag, maybe in the comment field. Make sure that you have a track number set for that episode, and it has your cover art, but also all the other information like the title, the album, the artist, all of that information really should be completed. But some of those are the often forgotten things, the track number, the cover art, and the URL to this particular episode. Then when you have this tagged, completed file, upload it to your media host. Wherever it is that you host your media, even if it's on your website, Definitely check out theaudacitypodcast.com slash hosting to learn more about different hosting options and everything that you need to know about podcast hosting. Or just jump straight into using Libsyn or Blueberry, and you can use my promo code NOODLE on either of those services to get a free month of whatever plan that you choose for hosting or stats. So you've produced your episode. That's step four, and the keys to this are edit the recording, add additional pieces, enhance as necessary, finalize show notes, optimize for search engines, export the final, add tags to the mp3s, and upload to the host. Then it's time to move on to step five, publish. If your content is produced ahead of time, then you may need to schedule your episode to publish, either at a specific time or on a specific day, or just publish that episode now. I do recommend consistency in your publishing schedule as much as possible. You may not have to be consistent as to the exact minute that you publish your episode, but at least try to be consistent as to the particular day on which you publish your episode. Then, after you've published, check the website. You need to make sure that your latest episode is visible on your website. I recommend opening a private browser window or an incognito browser window so that you're looking at your site exactly as a first-time visitor would see it. So nothing has been cached, no cookies, nothing like that. You're not logged in. They're seeing it, or you are seeing it, as exactly they would see it. So you can find out, are your links working? Is your multimedia properly embedded? Is the cache refreshed on your homepage as well as the specific content page? So check your website. After that, ping your RSS feed service if you're using a third-party feed service like FeedBurner, FeedBlitz, or anything like that because they have a delay on how quickly they actually publish your new content into the RSS feed that they're managing for you. So you may need to send a little ping to them or resync your feed in order for that latest post to be visible in your RSS feed. Because that's what you check next, your RSS feed. Make sure that your latest episode is visible in your RSS feed. If it's not, then your RSS feed may have a problem if you've already pinged it and resynced it. So this might be a hint that something's broken. Go run it through validators like feedvalidator.org or castfeedvalidator.com. Both of these work great for checking your RSS feeds and trying to find out what the problems are that are in it. And by the way, if you have problems with your RSS feed, that's something I specialize in and I have a specific flat rate service 
for repairing and optimizing RSS feeds. And if you need help with that, just contact me and I can help you with that. After you've checked your RSS feeds and you know that they're working, then verify that the appropriate updates are available in podcast apps and directories. The easiest way to do this is to subscribe to your own podcast in every app you can get, even if it's just the free apps and that's all you're able to use. But you need to make sure that your newest episode is available, that it downloads properly, and that it seems to play properly. Just keep in mind that some podcast apps or directories may be on a particular schedule, especially apps may not check immediately when you have a new item in your RSS feed, but they may check once an hour or once a day. So you might want to refresh that app manually in order for it to check to see if you have a new episode. Also, podcast directories like iTunes even cache their listings. So when you put a new episode out there, you may not see it in the iTunes podcast directory, but it will download for your subscribers as long as it's in your RSS feed. So don't panic if it's not in the directory, but do check the directory at some point a little bit after you've published your episode, like maybe a day after you published your episode. So the keys to step five, publish, are schedule or publish now, check the website, ping feed service if applicable, check RSS feeds, and verify updates in apps and directories. Then we move on to number six. You've got your episode out there. Now it's time to promote. Tell the world about your episode. This isn't the time for you to apply what you may have heard from the movie Field of Dreams. If you build it, they will come. That's the worst marketing advice to ever come out of Hollywood. And don't apply that in any way because it's really not true unless you're just a celebrity and you're absolutely lucky. It doesn't work that way. You have to be proactive in order to grow your podcast audience. So even let your current audience know that a new episode is available Because they may not know to check it. They may not know that it's available until they get around to checking it. So let them know. Here are several keys to promoting your podcast episode once you've put it out there. Submit to news sites. Consider places like Reddit or StumbleUpon. They're somewhat social networks, somewhat news sites. You could call them social news sites, really. But put your stuff out there. Just try not to be a spammer. But it's very easy to submit your contents to stumble upon. And I've seen great success in submitting to these different social news sites in bringing people to different kinds of content that we release through Noodle Mix Network. It could even mean contacting your local news agency. If you have something really important that you think the local news would be interested in, then definitely contact them. Submit your news items to them. Many newspaper websites and news agencies have methods that they use for receiving interesting news. They don't just find the stuff on their own. Sometimes it's sent to them by people who are involved in the news story. So submit to these different news outlets. Next, share on social networks. Go where your audience is, but whatever you do, do not be a spamming self-promoter. But places that you could consider would be Facebook pages, groups, and your profile, Twitter accounts, Google Plus pages, communities, and your profile, Pinterest boards, LinkedIn pages, groups, and your profile, and forums, and any other social network where your audience or your potential audience hangs out. But the big thing to remember is don't spam. You don't want to be kicked out for only self-promoting and only ever posting your own content. Be in there to communicate or get your community to promote you in these different social networks. Next, send to your email subscribers, if you have an email list, that is. They may not know that your new episode is out yet. They may be waiting to see when it's out. They may expect to hear from you in your newsletter when your new episode is out. But if nothing else, just mentioning it in your email newsletter helps bump you to the front of their minds so that they might listen or watch your episode much sooner than they would have otherwise. Next, monitor the performance. And I'm, I'm saying this with big caution here. Do not get as addicted to checking your stats. But I do recommend that you check your stats, but only briefly. Just, just glance at it. Like, 
just quickly hit that command or control W key. As soon as you look at your stats and you saw that number, just close it and don't check it again for maybe a few days. Just don't obsess over your stats. In fact, you may want to wait a couple days after you've published your episode to check your stats. Certainly don't check them the moment you publish your episode because the number will always be disappointingly low. Even if you have thousands of subscribers, the moment you publish your episode, it'll take that number a little bit to go up because some people's apps are scheduled to check the feeds once a day, every six hours, every hour, maybe just once a week. So give it some time, but it could be something that you could do to monitor your growth and find out what content is working well so you can find new ways of growing your audience. These are the keys under promote. Submit to new sites, share on social networks, send to email subscribers, and monitor performance. So the six Ps for a proven podcasting workflow, and I say proven because this is the podcasting workflow I use, and I've learned this from others, and I see others do this, and it works for them, even if they haven't learned from me or they haven't learned from the people that I've seen use this. This works really well, and I see people succeeding with this workflow over and over and over again. So these six steps are plan, prepare, present, produce, publish, and promote. Follow these six main steps with each of their subpoints, and I think you'll find much greater success in your podcasting because you've got a workflow that works well for you so that you can get those episodes out there. I'd love to hear from you what certain steps that you use in your workflow process that helps you with publishing new episodes please comment on the show notes at theaudacitytopodcast.com slash 165 and let me know what pieces you'd like to add or remove from your workflow because a future episode of the Audacity to Podcast will be some more workflow enhancing tips, just tiny little things that can make big differences in your podcasting workflow and getting your episodes out there quick, more quickly or in helping you produce or prepare for these things more easily and all with the intent of helping you simplify and speed up and get more great content out there. I've got a couple cool things to share with you. Podcast Masterclass recently finished and it was a blast. I had so much fun. I'm really looking forward to the next class, which will be in May 2014, but you can always see when the next class is scheduled by going to podcastmasterclass.com. This is where I teach you how to improve your podcast. So this isn't for the beginner. This is for someone who wants to improve what they're doing with their podcast to make their podcast amazing, taking it from average to amazing. Here's a testimonial from Jordan Harbinger from the Art of Charm podcast after he came through Podcast Masterclass. Hey guys, I really liked Daniel's podcast class. You know, at first I was a little worried because I am an advanced podcaster And what I mean by that is, you know, I've had a show for seven years now and I've got hundreds of thousands of downloads each month. So I thought, I'm not really sure if I'm going to learn a lot, but that turned out to be totally false. Not only were the classes informative uh, and the consulting informative, but the one-on-one really found a lot of little, tiny little hacks and little things to make my life as a podcaster that much easier went over a lot of the production stuff, smoothed out a lot of things that I had just always done. And it's doing it that way because I've always done it that way and things that just have evolved over time that I never would have thought to change myself. So I highly recommend it for any podcaster, beginner or advanced. I think there's a lot of value in it for everyone. Thanks again. Thank you so much, Jordan, for that. I really appreciate it. Jordan and I had a great time talking through all of these little details, and he was referring to part of Podcast Masterclass is this one-on-one evaluation of your podcast where you give me a sample episode, a link to your website, and I check more than 120 different items about your podcast, about your RSS feed, about your design, about your website, all of these things, and then we work through this. And if you'd like to also learn how to take your podcast from average to amazing, go to podcastmasterclass.com and use the promo code TAP listener so that you can save on your sign up over there for Podcast Masterclass. The next course starts in May 2014, and there will be another course also later in the year. 
but I'm really looking forward to this. It is, it's like a boot camp, really. It's rough and tough. We get in some of the nitty gritty details and confronting some of those assumptions and some of those things that we've just accepted for a while in podcasting and really help you improve your podcast for succeeding in business or growing your audience majorly, whatever it is. Podcast Masterclass could be the place for you. So check it out at podcastmasterclass.com. Also, Pottertainment Magazine is really cool. I've been reading through this because I'm not only a writer for the magazine, but also a reader. It's got some great content in it, and I'm looking forward to the next issue of Pottertainment Magazine. So check this out. It's at the moment only available for iOS devices, but you can get that by going to the audacitytopodcast.com slash Pottertainment or get the link in the show notes for this episode, number 165. Pottertainment is spelled P O D Ertainment. It's just like entertainment, but replace the E N T with P O D. And the link for that will be in the show notes for this episode. I'd love to hear from you. What are those things that you need help with in your podcasting workflow to make things flow more smoothly, faster, struggle points? And also, what are those certain assumptions? that you think the podcasting industry has about different things involved with podcasting, because I want to confront some of these and see, is this really true? Should we really still be doing this? Please email your feedback to feedback at the audacity to podcast.com or call and leave a voicemail at 903-231-2221. You can also go to the audacity to podcast.com on your computer or iOS device and send a voice message right through the website. Please comment on the show notes to let me know about your podcasting workflow at theaudacitypodcast.com slash 165. Now that I've given you some of the guts and taught you some of the tools, it's time for you to go podcast with passion, organization, and dialogue. I'm Daniel J. Lewis from theaudacitytopodcast.com and The Ramen Noodle on Twitter. Thank you for listening. The Audacity to Podcast is a proud member of Noodle Mix Network. Find more of our award-winning and award-nominated podcasts to make you think, laugh, and succeed at noodle.mx. Like you can theorize over the TV shows Once Upon a Time, Once Upon a Time in Wonderland, Resurrection, that's our newest podcast on the network, Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Agent Coulson was actually in one of the episodes. You gotta check it out. And much more. You can also learn how to be productive, get 